Hello, 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 hello. Welcome on in, everybody. Welcome to Bravo Book Club. We are doing House of Hilton chapters uh, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, and 15, right? I think, no, wait, I think we're only going to 14. Let's see, we're doing chapter 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 14. Oh, no, we are doing 15. Wow, we, ha we have... Six chapters that we're going to be breaking down tonight. Guys, it is juicy. Today's book club is, I mean, if you thought that these book clubs have been juicy, just get ready because um, this one's a little, it's a little heavier than I think we're used to. Um, there's a lot of good tea. There's a lot of stuff we're going to spill about the Hiltons, but OMG, we're getting into Kim Richard's past. We're getting into the dad, Ken, a little bit more and like the girl's relationship with Ken. We have a lot to break down tonight. I'll give you a minute to kind of trickle on in. Thank you, Kenny G1064, for the three badges. Love book club. I love you, Naya. More big Kathy tea. Lots of big Kathy tea, Alicia. Lots of big Kathy tea. Lots of Kim Richards tea that we're going to be breaking down as well. My heart actually kind of feels sad for Kim Richards. House of Horrors. Yes, Val. House of Horrors. Hi, Val. Hi, Hudson. Hi, Elaine. Hi. Hi, 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 Aaron. Hi, guys. Yes, yes, yes. Love the tea. We love it. Thank you, Charmin BB, for the three badges, my love. You guys are coming on in. You guys are hot with the badges. If you love Bravo Book Club, drop some badges. Drop some super chats. Smash that like button and hit that subscribe button on YouTube if you haven't already. Go and give it some love. All right. I really wish Kim would have released her book. I bet money that Kathy stopped it. Probably, Rachel. I actually would believe that at this point. Yay for book club. I love book club. I love spending Tuesday nights with you guys. Zach, are you having a mega pint? Um, this is sort of a mega pint. It's a, um, a no filter mimosa. I made it with some pure cane because I'm like doing a collab with them for this month for Pride Month. As you know, Adam and I are doing collabs with Birchbox. I'm also doing a collab with pure cane and I was testing out some recipes. And so, yeah, we got a mega pint of whatever's left. Um, so I'll be enjoying that tonight. All right. I'm I'm actually really drinking tonight because Adam likes to text me and be like, oh, were we a little litty city on the live last night? And I'm like, you know what? Tonight, we are going to get a little Liddy City on the live tonight. Cheers, everybody. If you're drinking some no-filter wine, let me know which one. White, rosé, stock up, get ready. Love the tea on the Hiltons. Taking the mask off of those Hiltons. I know that's right, Kenny G. High tones. Okay, shall we dive into it? Let's start with chapter 10. We're going to be breaking down chapters 10 through 15. Chapter 10, we kick off and it very heavily focuses on Kim Richards. And this is where we have Monty in the house. So if you guys remember in Kim Richards' later seasons, um, the last couple of seasons that she was on, Chris wants to know what I'm drinking. This is a no filter mimosa. So it's with the no filter white wine. You can also use the rose um, and some pure cane electrolytes and a little bit of orange sparkling water. Yum, 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 delicious. Um, oh, we are a we are in for a treat. Countdown to Zach's birthday. Yes, my birthday is next Wednesday, the 15th. So we're what eight days away from my birthday. I know that's right, Val. Let's get it, get it, get it. Okay, let's dive into it. Chapter 10. Monty's in the house. You guys remember Monty from Kim's last couple of seasons on Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. He was Kim Richards' first husband. He came from money. His parents were very wealthy. As we know, Big Kathy told them, you better marry wealthy or you better not come home at all. Snap, snap, pat the puss. So they ended up getting married because Kim ended up getting pregnant. Not like Big Cat, not like little Kathy who got pregnant in her backseat. Kim, you know, she just fell in love and had a little baby. Four days until mine. Yay. Happy early birthday, Russ Davis. Drinking white wine. Oh, yes, Elaine. Elaine ordered a big old mega pint of no filter wine. She was sending me photos and videos. Elaine. Elaine's going to be Liddy City this week. I saw her case of no filter wine. Get it, guys. Talk about nofilterwine.com. Um, so they ended up getting married. Kim ended up getting pregnant. And apparently abortion was just not an option because the family was Catholic. And so big Kathy and even little Kathy and Rick, they were like, no, Kim, you're not allowed to have an abortion. You're having this baby. And because we're Catholic and because you're pregnant, you're going to marry him. And we're going to have a shotgun wedding. And it's going to be fantastic. And it seemed great. And this is where we get Kim's oldest daughter, Brooke. Ultimately, things with Monty didn't end up working out because Kim was always trying to keep her... Um, 
her mom raised her to always be looking for another rich man. So she was kind of always on the lookout for the next big man, the next bigger, richer man. Um, And even though Monty did have money and did come from money, he wasn't like that Hilton type of wealth. So she always kind of had her eye open in search of whatever may come next. Um, He knew that he couldn't live up to Big Kathy's expectations either. When he actually proposed to Kim, he the ring that he chose for her, Big Kathy did not approve of it. So she made Kim return the ring and she said, "Uh uh-uh, he needs to buy you a bigger ring or he can't come to the table. He can't sit with us. And so he didn't end up sitting with them because he had to go and he went and got, he got her a bigger, better ring. And then Big Kathy was happy with that. So that didn't work out. They ended up wrapping it up, but obviously they stayed really close friends over all these years because when he was sick, he passed away a few years ago. But when he was sick in recent years, we saw Kim take him in and took care of him. So there was obviously still a lot of love that was there. And I think he wanted to provide for her. I think he wanted to give her the life that she deserved, or at least the life that she wanted. Deserved is a big word, but at least the life that she was wanting for herself. But I think he knew that the expectations were a little too high so monty exits then enter martin dave or sorry marvin davis's son greg davis and this is kim's next husband and kathy actually did not like or little kathy kathy hilton did not like the davis family because she considered them to be new money and she was like look at me i'm married to the hilton family and the hiltons are old money they come from what they got money honey and these little davis kids they don't know what they're talking about because their dad what he's famous now it's all new money it ain't shit So Kathy didn't like him, but interestingly enough, Kathy's the one that introduced um, Kim to uh, Greg Davis, which is understandable considering Kathy's like super jealous. So of course she's going to introduce somebody to, she's going to introduce her sister to somebody that she really doesn't think very highly of, but at least he has more money than Monty. And that was all, all little Kathy's priority. And that was all big Kathy's priority too. Big Kathy was like, look, they've got the glitz and the glam. And to me, Fame is just as important as money. So if they've got that, Kim's solid. Um, But she kept, Kim really did keep close with Monty to the point where Greg obviously came from that Davis money and there's a lot of money there. So even Monty, when he would get caught up in gambling debts, she would help him clear those debts by having Greg give him money. It's unclear whether they were loans and whether he paid them back, but Greg was definitely giving him money to help settle some of his gambling debts. Um, And then she ended up having two more kids with Greg. So we know there was Brooke and then two more came from her second marriage to Greg before she ended up retiring from acting. And then she was like, at this point, I'm just going to be a stay at home mom and I'm just going to have kids because that's what mama taught her. Mama said, have a lot of kids, marry rich and have a lot of kids. That way that child support money, if things ever go south, you got the alimony and you got all the child support money and you are good. But the Davies family did not like him. They thought that she was a gold digger and they thought that her mom was also a gold digger. And they're like, Big Kathy, we see the scheme that you're trying to play and we ain't about it. Okay. And also apparently... Greg's mom was just as demanding as Big Kathy as Kim's mom. So there was obviously a lot of friction. And Kim was often torn between having to listen to Big Kathy and having to listen to Greg's mom. And Greg's mom was a monster, just like Big Kathy. And she like she was she would call Kim and she'd be like, I need you to come over and I need you to come over now. And then Kim would be like, Well, I can't because my parents over and whatever. And then she's like, No, I don't care who's there. You need to come over and you need to come over now because I want to see my grandkids or whatever her reason was. And Kim would and Kim and Greg would just have to drop everything just to actually go and spend time with them. Um, if you are on YouTube, I'm going to show you a picture of Greg. He wasn't the best. I mean, he wasn't. I'm not saying he's ugly because he definitely was not ugly. He wasn't unattractive. I was just a little shocked. He, I don't know. I just thought little Kathy would have given, well, I guess this is the type of guy little Kathy would want to set her up. But he seemed like a nice, wholesome guy. He wasn't super hunky. Kim looked really pretty. She looked young. She had her fresh little blonde hair. She has her cute little dress on. I didn't, he's not a bad looking guy at all. I wouldn't even say, like, he's good looking. He's just not, you know, when you think of Marvin Davis, you're just like, va, va, boom, give me the vam. Um, you guys can't see it on the Instagram, but if you go on the YouTube channel, you should, you'll be able to see him there. But yeah, that's him. I'll show you her one of her other future boyfriends, and he was a cutie patootie. Um, and I guess that's why is I'm comparing the two of them. Um, I should have pulled up a picture of Monty, too, but I forgot to pull one. But we all saw Monty on Beverly Hills, so we don't really need to keep up with Monty. He was no prize either. But... 
eventually the uh, Greg's parents gave him an ultimatum because Kim loved to spend money just like her mother. Apparently Kim took out, took a lot of the bad traits from her mom. She wasn't like super aggressive or demanding, even though we did kind of see her throw some of her tantrums on Beverly Hills, but she wasn't as like, I think, malicious and evil as her mother, but she did inherit a lot of her bad traits. And one of the bad traits that she inherited was that she always spent a lot of money and his parents, Greg's parents did not like that. They were not happy with the fact that she would just bleed money because it was family money. It was money that the dad earned. The son didn't necessarily earn, but eventually they were like, look, you either stay with Kim. And if you stay with Kim, you're cut off or you stay with the family. And as we learned from Chris Jenner on the Kardashians, never go against the family. Never go against the family. And so he didn't go against the family and they ended up getting divorced. But Big Kathy made sure that Kim was left with lots of little goodies from her divorce settlement, including a $23,000 a month alimony check on top of her child support. She got 23 grand a month on top of, I think it was like 20 something grand that she was getting for child support, which is wild wow look at that see danny walker dropped a super chat love your honest and fair perspective enjoy your ig page and the wine who gonna check me boo the haters stay extra basic i know that's right danny thank you danny for the super chat that's so sweet of you okay so I appreciate you. I'll leave that comment up. That way everyone gets to see what a boss Danny is. We love me some Danny. Um, but yeah, she ended up leaving very comfortably. She had a lot of Greg's money. And after Greg, Kathy Hilton kept trying to set up Kim with Donald Trump. We know that she talked about like kind of very loosely dating him. Kathy Hilton, who we know is still very good friends with Donald Trump. She was trying to make that happen back in the day. Could you imagine Kim being our first lady? Kim Richards being the Melania that I don't think Trump would ever be a president with Kim Richards. But apparently Kim was not a fan of Donald Trump's. She wasn't that into him. She gave him a shot, but like there was no vibe. There was no connection. But Kathy Hilton was like, no, we're going to make this happen. And Kim was just like, nah, I'm good. So then Kim ended up dating this successful security broker, but he was bad news bears. He was real trouble, like real trouble. But you need to see him because he's real cute. Okay. So... Let's let's pull him up because he's a cutie patootie. Where's his photo at? His name was John. And look at that. Like John with the glasses and John with the hair and John with the little smile. He doesn't have like lips, but he's got arms. What he's lacking in lips, he makes up in arms. Kim looked cute. She had her fresh little blowout. She got the blonde bangs going. She was looking fresh. And I'm just like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna. Hello, John. Hi. You can, you can, you know, do some naughty things and that's just going to turn me on even more. Take me to prison. Let's go to church. We don't need to go to church. We'll go to, we'll go straight to the devil's lair. Oh, he was a cutie patootie. Not even going to lie. Yes. Cute, cute couple. She looked so happy. Wow. John is good looking. Cute. He was a bad boy, guys. And yes, he was super cute. And I feel like Kim Richards probably would have stuck out with him had she had the opportunity to. But get this. Here's where it starts to get juicy. He was murdered. He was killed by a hitman. And on top of that, not only was he murdered, he was murdered and executed while he was on the phone with Kim Richards. He was at a deli and he was on the phone with Kim and she was talking to, them, to him and all of a sudden it went silent. But then she called the deli and she's like, what the heck, like, what's going on? Have you seen my man? My boyfriend should be there. And they explained to her that he had just been shot in the head twice. He was murdered. And apparently the hitman was paid $30,000 to execute him. Isn't that crazy? Like literally, like no wonder she's so fucked up. She literally had her this hot boyfriend of hers that was murdered while she was on the phone with him. Executed. Shot in the head twice. Insane traumatized um and then everyone in her life described her as like a big drama queen so they're like she milked that for a really long time and i'm like i would milk that too my man was just like killed on the phone while i was talking to him yeah i would be i would be a little shook at like first my mom is big kathy and then little kathy is evil to me and she's my big sister and then i was a child star and i provided for my family and then my boyfriend gets killed on the phone thank you no well months later his mom 
ends up trying to sell his Harley Davidson, his motorcycle. And then this guy, John Jackson, ends up coming to buy the motorcycle. And he's like, hey, I want to buy this motorcycle. And she's like, you want to buy this motorcycle? Well, you're going to have to check with Kim Richards because Kim loved this motorcycle and Kim was his ex-girlfriend. And I can't just sell his motorcycle without his without her permission because she needs to authorize this. And so it ended up connecting John Jackson to Kim Richards. And he ended up being not her future husband, but the father of her fourth child. She had the first baby with Monty. She had the second two kids with Greg. Obviously, she didn't have any kids with this guy. But now she has John Jackson. And John Jackson became baby daddy number three with her fourth child. And John said that Kim was a lot like Big Kathy, that she loved to drink. She loved to keep the company of men. As we know, she was constantly in pursuit of finding a better man. And apparently she was very free and open with that. And we know that Big Kathy encouraged that because Big Kathy wanted them to find good men. Big Kathy was trying to teach them how to have better sex, how to give better blowjobs. Like Big Kathy was, you know, she was trying to pimp her daughters out. She was teaching them how to dress to find a man. Big Kathy taught her a lot. But John also said that the family, that as a whole, they were pretty awful. Like Big Kathy's little clan, getting to know them all. He said all the girls were bitchy. um, And he often heard them drop racial and anti-Semitic slurs and make really inappropriate, insensitive jokes. So this kind of makes sense as to some of the behavior we've heard from Paris and her siblings. Not Nikki. Paris and is it Conrad or Baron? Which one of them is it anyway there's footage of them obviously kathy hilton the accusations have been thrown out at her that she's dropped slurs racial slurs homophobic slurs it's getting out there apparently the apple doesn't fall far from the big kathy tree big kathy sounds real crazy and overbearing oh wait danny oh wait there's more okay this is just the chat this we're just this is just chapter 10 we still have 11 12 13 14 15 okay Then we get into chapter 11. And in chapter 11, here's where we meet Big Kathy's third husband, Jack Katane. He was a bad boy, too. He was a mobster. Oh, Carrie. Crazy because Kyle and Mo are Jewish. Oh, Carrie. The things that I've heard that Kathy Hilton has said about Mauricio, it's more than him just being Jewish. Like, she doesn't even like, I mean, from what I've heard, rumors, speculation, hearsay, from what I've heard, She doesn't even like the fact that he's Mexican. So where's Kyle and all this? She does come up a little bit, but obviously the problem kid, the problem child was Cam and Kathy. Anyway, chapter 11 is where we meet Big Kathy's third husband, Jack Katane. He was a mobster, always up to no good. He ended up getting busted by the feds, got busted by the IRS. But Kathy loved him because he always gave her jewels. He gave her jewels and he gave her chaos and she loved both of them. She loved the drama. Is it me? Am I the drama? Yes, big Kathy, you're the drama. These two were just a hot mess express. They drank, they fought, they cheated. They loved to make each other jealous. And apparently it made the sex all that much more passionate. I don't know if I would want to be in a relationship that toxic or volatile, but they blew up. Um, Often their fights would just get very nasty and their fights aren't the only things that blew up and got nasty because they ended up blowing up their own house for the insurance money that big Kathy ended up revealing years later to one of her friends that reveals this in the book that their house caught fire. But it was interesting because Jack's kids, um, Kathy had like a box of, of special like photos and, and like things that you wouldn't want to lose in a fire. She had a special box that she ended up giving his kids one day. And they're like, oh my God, it's so crazy that you ended up with this despite the fire. And then they later found out that it was because the fire was planned and they got it. They planned the fire to get the insurance money. Um, and that's why they intentionally removed all of the valuables so that they wouldn't lose any of those. Everybody in the live chat's like, what? No way. Yeah, guys, it's crazy. These chapters were nuts. Um, and in the end, when their marriage ended, she's the only ex that got to keep their family ring. All the other women that broke up with with Jack, because he obviously, just like Kathy, had many spouses and many women and kept the company of a lot of people. And he would always give them a family ring. But at the end of their relationship, they always had to return the family ring because you never go against the family. Well, the only person who got to keep the ring was Big Kathy. Sasha says, what the F is this true? Listen. Some of it sounds so crazy and so outlandish, but there are so many people 
that corroborates some of these stories. I mean, it seemed like it was a well-researched book. I take it all with a grain of salt. And I'll talk about that as we get into the chapters that are that bring up Kathy or not Kathy that bring up Kyle. Cause obviously we see Kyle a lot more. And I think we have a pretty good like idea of who we think Kyle is. So we'll get into like, I think I take all of the book with a grain of salt, but I would say it's probably about 80 to 90% true and factual. And the other 10% is maybe exaggerated by the people in their lives. Cause when you're writing a hit story, when you're writing a hit book, a hit piece, People exacerbate the things. They stretch details. But I mean, based off of Kathy's history and the fact that multiple people corroborate this type of behavior, it sounds like it's probably true. Elaine says it's so unbelievable that it has to be true. You know, I mean, I'm pretty sure most of it or a good chunk of it has to be true. Right. I mean, I don't know. I don't know them personally. But that was chapter 11. Um, then we get into chapter 12 and chapter 12 is after her divorce. Um, from Katane, he also dies and she divorces him. He passes away. She moves on single. I'm totally loving this while I'm doing my laundry. Well, thank you, Rachel. I appreciate it. Um, I, I loved reading these chapters too. These are probably the juiciest chapters we got anyway. So he dies, she divorces him. She is moving on with her life. She's like, okay, I'm ready to start a new chapter. She decides she wants to have another baby. Hi, Geetum GM4 from Auckland, New Zealand. Hello, my love. Hello, Gita. Thank you, Harina, Harina, Harina Locke, for buying three badges and dropping them in the Instagram live chat. Thank you, my love. I appreciate you. I appreciate all the love you guys send my way. You guys at the bomb.com. Love you. Um, anyway, Kathy decides that after her last husband, after her third husband, she wants to have another baby. So what does she do? She finds a woman that didn't want to have a kid that wasn't prepared or ready to have a kid. And she took her baby. She literally convinced this woman to give her her baby. She's like, you don't want the baby. Cool. I'll take the baby off your hands. I need a baby in my life. So I'm just going to, you know, hold on to this baby for you. And I'm going to raise it. And her friend was like, you're an old lady now. Like you can't just be raising somebody else's baby. Like, how do you just get somebody else's baby? And she's like, I just told her to give it to me. I voluntarily will was willing to take the baby in because she didn't want the baby and she didn't feel like she was ready for it. So the baby's mine now. And her friend is like, you're fucking crazy. And she's like, I wanted a baby. Like she just went to like Amazon Prime and was like, all right, time for a baby. Let's go. Like, who the fuck is this woman? She's insane. Um, but anyway, she takes the baby in and then she grows tired of the baby. And she's like, I don't want the baby anymore. <laughs> So then she gives up the baby. Luckily, the baby's mother had a relative that wanted, that was willing to take care of the baby. So she just like gives the baby up. She probably, she had the baby probably for less than a year. I want to say it was only a couple of months because I think the mother's family was like, hold up, wait a minute. Like you can't just take somebody else's baby. And so she was just like, well, here, I decided I don't want the baby anymore. So she gave it back to the family. Like this woman was insane. But anyway, she grew tired of like living in LA. She grew tired of like stealing people's babies and stealing people's husbands and smashing people's cars or smashing people's ankles and car doors. So she ends up leaving LA, going to Palm Desert. She got a facelift, she got a nose drop, and then she went to go pursue a new rich man out in Palm Desert. Yeah. Yeah. She literally took the baby in like a pet such dysfunction yeah no shit i mean she's crazy this woman is batshit crazy she is batshit crazy i had to be in the whelms the, the street oh i had to be in when the street lights came on yep they remind me of my mom's family i don't talk to them and if hell is real i'm sure they have a seat reserved there. oh no trisha yikes Catherine says big kathy was crazy zach you're too funny thank you elaine said what the actual fuck literally what the actual fuck um, so that was chapter 12. Then we get into chapter 13 and Kathy, big Kathy moves to Palm desert. And at this point, it didn't take her long to find herself a new daddy, a new silver Fox daddy out in Palm desert. She ends up nailing a handsome and charismatic dude. His name's Robert C. Fenton jr. So he has three names and a junior at the end of it ends up hooking him. And in typical T Kathy fashion, she ends up marrying him fast. All of his daughters hated him or sorry, hated her and were upset with him for marrying her. And she hated the daughters in typical big Kathy fashion as well. You know, she didn't like to get along with anybody else's kids. She pretended to like them. 
And she even did this nice thing where she called up one of the daughters and she's like, hey, so I know your daughter, who would be her husband's granddaughter, so her step-granddaughter, because um, he was married to somebody, had the kids, his wife ended up passing away, then he found Kathy, married big Kathy, okay? So then she calls up one of the daughters and she's like, I think, you know, they would want, I think your your daughter would want... Um, a ring that belonged to your mother, their her her grandmother, and she was like, "Oh my God, Big Kathy! I I thought you hated me. This is so sweet of you to actually give us my mother's ring for my daughter. Like that's so sweet." And she's like, "Yeah." So she arranged to get one of the diamond rings over to the daughter for you know her daughter because she felt like the little girl would one day want it you know in memory of her grandmother. Well, it turns out it was never really the grandmother's ring. She literally lied about giving up this ring that belonged to the grandmother that never actually belonged to the grandmother. She was just trying to play nice and make it look like, you know, I'm trying to do something nice, so don't hate me. I'm just like, you're nuts. Like, who literally does that? I need to find this book. Yes, you do, Catherine. It's juicy. Big Kathy was batshit crazy. Yep. I'm sure the neighbors loved her. Oh, I'm sure the neighbors have stories about her, Danny. Big Kathy sounds like a toxic mother. I had absolutely no idea she was like, this. I mean, now we know why the Kathy, Kyle, and Kim are so crazy and their relationships are so deranged. Um, anyway, Fenton, Bob, Bob Fenton, who was her husband's name, apparently was enamored with the Hiltons and loved that he was connected to them through Big Kathy. And that was part of the reason he ended up staying in the marriage, or at least that's what his daughters think. They think that he, he was so like, he loved being connected to the Hilton family that to him, he was like, I'll put up with big Kathy. I'll put up with all of her craziness. I love her and I want to be with her. And I mean, I don't blame him either. Rick and Kathy would literally write him $500 checks for his birthday. Um, Kristen, it's not on audible. I literally had to get a copy that somebody sent me from Australia and it's a paperback copy. It's a used paperback copy that somebody sent me. It's not on Audible. If it were on Audible, I would have binged it already. But I'm reading it page by page and breaking it down for you guys. But anyway, Bob loved being part of the Hilton family. For his birthday, they would just literally write him $500 checks. They'd be like, here you go, Bob. Happy birthday. And I'm like, shit, I want to I wanna, uh, to be connected to the Hiltons like that. Um, but yeah. Thank you, Carrie G10, for the three badges, my love. Thank you. Appreciate you. This book is in this book is in Amazon Canada. Um, I don't know if it's in Canada. I know it's available on Kindle. So if you guys want to order the Kindle version of House of Hilton, which is about the Hilton family, it exposes all of them. How much do you believe these stories? I mean, I would say I believe like 85% of them. I think some of it is people didn't like them. And so because they didn't like them, they maybe exaggerated some of these stories a little bit. There definitely seems to be little bits of bitter undertones. Um, but I believe the bulk of it is true only because you have so many different people from different chapters of their lives. Like you have all of the exes, you have all of the daughters of the exes for, and these are multiple different exes from different chapters, people that dated Kim, people that dated Kathy, you know, they're all coming out and they all seem to have very similar recollections, at least of their behavior. Are the details entirely kosher? I don't know, but yeah. Anyway, Big Kathy didn't really like Bob that much. Even though she was married to him, she was also really mean to him. She would make him sleep in the guest room. She wouldn't have sex with him. If he bought her a gift that she thought was too cheap, she would laugh and make him return it. Like, she was just very, she was not a very nice lady. Then we get into chapter 14. And when, um, while marrying Bob, she ended up finding out that her first husband, who's Kathy Hilton's dad, um, Larry, he ends up getting sick and like sick to the point where he becomes in a vegetative state because he ended up getting beaten up because we know he was super sketchy as well. So he was literally a six year old man gets beat up with like a baseball bat. Didn't even have any teeth left. Kathy went to go visit him and she was shocked. And her biggest revelation from going and seeing him is that he didn't have any teeth. So <laughs> he literally got beaten up to the point where he became a vegetable and he was stuck in the hospital and he was just like slowly deteriorating. And little Kathy never really got to know her father. She never really had any contact with him. Obviously, she was like a little toddler when big Kathy found Ken Richards and then he had Kim and Kyle. Uh, yeah, Kim and Kyle. So little Kathy, Kathy Hilton was essentially raised by 
Kyle and Kim's dad, not her own dad, because he was just, he was a bit of a deadbeat and he like wanted nothing to do with Big Kathy. So anyway, Big Kathy obviously still had a soft spot in her heart if she went to go visit him after he got like brutally attacked. It's hard to be, to feel bad for him for getting brutally attacked. I mean, especially because he's 60, but he was a terrible man. Like he didn't do great things. Um, Anyway, little Kathy didn't really know her real father, but two months after Larry became, um, after Larry died, Ken Richards, who's Kyle and Kim's dad, he raised little Kathy, as we know, he became terminally ill with cancer and he was too old to work. He was living off of social security. His wife had a little job. So they were really just living off of his social security checks and what his wife was making. And she wasn't making very much. And since he got cancer and he became like very, very sick. And he, I think was only given like six months at best, maybe a year to live. And his medical bills just kind of kept piling up. And the book describes it as he was abandoned by his three daughters, that they kind of just went off and were doing their own thing. They were very close to their mother. They were living in L.A., kind of just couldn't really be bothered by him. We know that uh, Kathy Hilton obviously severed ties with him when she married Rick. So... I don't know what the situation was with Kim and Kyle and why they weren't as close with him, but it says that they were virtually abandoned by him. And that's mainly described by his wife at the time because he ended up getting remarried. But so he and his wife, Sylvia, Ken and Sylvia, they were literally dead broke. Like the, the medical bills were piling up. They couldn't keep up. They were trying to just keep him alive. So against his like desire, Sylvia's like, we need to reach out to Kathy and Rick. We need to reach out to your daughter. She's loaded. She can help you. Like she can help us pay these medical bills. She can help you get the treatment that you need. You know, it's at least worth a shot. And he had so much pride, but eventually he caved and they reached out to Kathy and Rick and Kathy and Rick were like, nope, we can't help you. Or, oh, we can't do it right now. So-and-so's birthday's party's coming up or Paris needs a new dress. Like we just can't afford to help you right now. Like they came up with a number of excuses until finally Ken and Sylvia literally had to beg them. Like we need help. Like I am dying. I am near death and I need you to help me because I am we've maxed out all of our credit cards. Like there's nothing else that we can do at this point. So what do Kathy and Rick do to help their, her father? They loaned him $10,000. Never once came to visit him. They gave him a loan of $10,000. Eventually his wife sold their condo because they couldn't afford to keep it anymore. And at this point they were practically living at the hospital, um, sold their condo so that they could pay back Kathy and Rick. And then they ended up deciding to move to Vegas with her daughter to go and stay with them, which is insane. Yeah. They loaned Lane loaned them $10,000. So it was like, here's 10 grand, but there's an expectation that at some point you're going to pay this back. It was insane. Insane. Um, all their credit cards were maxed out. Sylvia in the book says that they literally had less than $200 to their name when they finally were able to pay back Rick for the money that he loaned them. So they made it right. And they paid back all the $10,000 that they, you know, needed to borrow at the time. Um, but they had all these credit cards. And so they ended up moving in with the daughter and eventually they called Kyle to see if Kyle could help them. And Kyle was like, yes, I can help you. Come on, come to LA. I'll help you guys get into a veteran center. So they tried to get in there. That didn't work out. So then Kyle ended up getting them into Cedar sinai um, and getting them help there. So Kyle seems to be like, it seems like they had some sort of relationship with Kyle and Kyle seems to be the one that helped them out the most, but they ended up moving in with Kim. So they went from Vegas from living with Sylvia's daughter to moving in with Kim in Los Angeles. Or I think Kim was living in Calabasas actually. Um, and his wife said that living with Kim was a nightmare, that she would always get drunk. She had little regard for the dad. She had her own kids and she would kind of just let them run wild. And the dad's like terminally ill. So she's like, it was just really inconsiderate that like he's dying. She didn't keep the kids in check. She was always getting hammered. But it's also like, Clearly she has a drinking problem and she has little kids. Like, why are you going to move into a house? Like, I get it. You're running out of options, but also like, you know, I don't know. I was kind of like, you're complaining, but yet you have a place to stay now. Like Kathy couldn't be bothered by you. At least Kyle got you into Cedar sinai to help you get the treatment that you needed. And Kim, you know, at least Kim is willing to take you in and you have a place to stay, you know, and Kim had a nice house in Calabasas. 
but she said that they hated living with Kim or she hated living with Kim and that Kim, she dis- describes Kim as selfish. I don't know if I would necessarily, I think Kathy Hilton is selfish. I would describe Kim as more of just like damaged. You know, I think Kim had shit that she was going on, had shit that she was trying to work through. Um, no, Brandy and Kim are not still friends, Alicia. I believe that they haven't talked in a while. So yeah, it's really sad, Danny, right? Um, but anyway, so they tried to leave Kim's house and they ended up, they're like, we're just going to go back to Vegas and live with my daughter. It seems like the best option. Like, Kim, you've got shit going on. Like, we can't do this. And Kim's like, no. Kim and Kyle were both like, no, you guys need to stay in Los Angeles. You need to stay here in California. You can't go back. You know, he's not doing well. We don't want him away from us. And eventually Sylvia tried to move Ken out. And she was like, all right, if you guys aren't going to let us out, I'm going to move out. And so he was like in a wheelchair and she's literally trying to get him out. And she says that as she was trying to physically get him out, that Kim physically attacked her and threatened to send Rick and Kathy after her if she ever took the father away. She's like, don't ever think that you're going to take them away. I'll call Kathy and Rick and they'll make sure they set you straight because they have the money and the resources to burn you to the fucking ground. I was like, damn. Um, But the reality was he was really sick and he was dying. So Sylvia's argument is like, I was just trying to take him out of California and take him to Vegas. That way he could at least die in peace because Kim's house is not bringing him any peace. Their kids, they're running around. It's loud. It's hectic. It's noisy. Kim's a hot mess. Like he, like this isn't how I want him to go. I want him to go in peace and quiet, which, you know, is unfortunate. Like it, these are still his daughters. Um, I believe this was her daughter from her previous marriage. So to me, I'm, I'm, you know, reading this and listening to like her recollection of things. And to me, I was kind of like, mm, I feel like Kyle and Kim could have found a way to make it work since they didn't want him to leave California. Um, she claims that they only wanted Ken to stay in California was because they were too selfish to go visit him in Las Vegas. I don't know how much of that I believe. Um, I think, like I said, Kathy is selfish. I think Kim is just lost. And I think Kyle was trying her best. You know, she was also trying to make it work with Mauricio. They had kids. She had her daughter from her previous uh, relationship. So I think Kyle wanted the best, but I think, you know, Kim and Kyle, Kim and, and Kath, or sorry, yeah, Kim and Kyle, I think for them, it was just an awkward situation, but eventually Kim buckled. She flew her dad to Vegas. She's like, all right, if this is really what you want, I'm not going to keep you against your will. Flew him to Vegas. Once he gets to Vegas, he ends up having a heart attack. He gets hospitalized again. And then, you know, they end up moving back in with Sylvia's daughter. And she says that at one point, Kim ends up coming to Vegas and she showed up at their house and she was belligerently drunk in Vegas. Um, And Sylvia's like, I'm not going to let you in. Like, this is ridiculous. And apparently she was out at one of the Hilton hotels and she was gambling and, you know, lost a bet and she was drunk. Clearly she had drinking issues, but shortly after that, he ends up dying. And Kim and Kyle come to visit him in Vegas after he passed away. And Sylvia seems a little bitter. She's like, they didn't come until after he died. And I'm like, but they were there with him when he was in California. And they wanted to keep him there. And it's not really realistic when they're working moms. They have a family to provide for in California. It's not entirely realistic for them to be going back and forth. Granted, California and Vegas, like LA and Vegas, like it's an easy, quick 45-minute flight that if they wanted to make it work, I'm sure they could make it work. But I'm sure it's also challenging. Um, and I'm, I'm pretty sure they weren't expecting their dad to pass away so quickly, but he ends up passing away. Sylvia was very upset about it. Um, she's like, none of his daughters gave a shit about him. She says that at one point, right after he died, Kat, uh, Rick Hilton called the hospital and he's like, Kathy needs to talk to her dad. And Sylvia's like, why? Like, she didn't even like her dad. She couldn't be bothered by him. She didn't talk to him. Like, we didn't even go to her wedding because she was such a bitch to us. But she was like, whatever, Kathy needs to work that work out whatever she needs to work out. And she apparently was like hysterically crying and broke down on the phone. It was like, you know, sobbing and doing her whole thing. Whatever. Um, saying how much she loved her father and how much he did for her and how much he did for the girls. And Sylvia just kind of rolled her eyes. But they felt that if, if Kathy really cared about Ken, that she could have helped out. She could have paid for his medical bills. Or at the very least, she could have at least visited him. Which I think is fair. I think Kathy was the worst of them all. I think she was the most selfish of them. I think Kim was troubled. And I think Kyle was just, you know, trying to do her thing. You know, she was just trying to keep her family going. Um, Then we get into chapter 15. And this is the last chapter. And this is the last time I think Big Kathy, well, it is the last time Big Kathy comes up. 
um, and that whole Hilton family chapter closes in chapter 15. So around the same time that their father was dying, Big Kathy ends up finding a lump in her breast and she was diagnosed with cancer which the girls have talked about on Real Housewives of Beverly Hills before. And Kyle's always been really afraid because uh, breast cancer runs in their family. So Big Kathy gets cancer. And even then she (laughs) she complained about her husband, who's now her caretaker. And all she did was bitch about him and like what a pain in the neck he was for her. Um, She, I guess, was pissed that she thought when she was marrying him that he had money. He led her to, to believe that he was very wealthy and that he was well off. So she was like, oh, I'm I'm going to be taken care of. Well, it ended up being the opposite. And yet now he was over here living off whatever money she had. And she's like, that is not the deal that I signed up for. I was supposed to marry into your money. You don't even have money. You lied to me. And like, I can't be mad. Like, I can't be mad at Big Kathy. If I were her, I'd be pissed too. And I wouldn't bang him either if he lied to me and told me he had money and I thought that I was going to be taken care of. Like if that was my objective and that was my goal, which isn't my goal in dating, but I understand that was Big Kathy's goal. So I understand him being like, yeah, I don't have money. So you're paying for my life. I would be pissed. I'd be like, yeah, fuck you. You are going to sleep in the guest room and I'm not going to bang you. No, thank you. Um... But yeah, she was pissed at him. She didn't like him, but he really loved her and he took care of her. He took good care of her so much so that he felt guilty uh, or sorry, so much so that she felt guilty because she remembers how he lost his first wife and she, you know, helped him go through that grieving process because she swooped in real quick right after that. And she was like, shit, he had to take care of his last wife and then she died on him and now he has to take care of me and now I'm going to die on him. Like, this is crazy. But she actually seemed very convinced that she was going to beat this. She was very resilient. She was very much like, I'm going to take this on and I'm going to go for it. He took good care of her. She did not want a mastectomy. She refused to give up her breasts. Like, I, and I get it. Like, that has to be very personal for a woman to, you know give up their breasts. She didn't want to do it. She wasn't going to go through it. So she ended up going through surgery to have the lump removed. Then she ended up going through chemo and radiation. Ultimately, that didn't help um, because the cancer ended up spreading to her brain and she she eventually died in 2002. But she made sure that before she died, she called her husband's daughter a see you next Tuesday. She was quite the woman, let me tell you. She was like, listen, if I'm going out, then I'm going to let you know what you think of me, and I think you're going to see you next Tuesday, okay? Peace out, bitch. Now I can die in peace. I'm like, listen, if anything, she's consistent. She's consistently a monster. If I'm going out. I'm going to let you know how I feel. You got to give it to Big Kathy. She stayed true to character all the way until the very end. Um, but she died with Bob by her side. Bob, you know, rode it out with her till the very end, took care of her, was very sweet and gracious with her. She actually passed away at Kim's house because Kim moved her in a week before she died because I guess they saw the writing on the wall instead of like moving her into a hospice center. They decided to move her into Kim's house, which, you know, according to the dad was such a great place to move when you're about to die. Um, she had many memorials for a lot of people. A lot of people knew her. A lot of people showed up for her. I mean, even when you're awful to people, they still show up to remember how great you were or how great they wanted to think that you were. But poor Bob. I feel really bad for Bob because he, as mean as she was to him and as awful as she was, especially in the end, in her will, which she changed at the last minute right before she died, in her will... All she left him was her ashes. That was the only thing she left to him in her will was her ashes. Can you imagine? Like this woman, (laughs) her ashes, that was it. No money. He didn't get the house because the house was hers. She owned the home, um, which she convinced him after she married him to sell his house and then to use all the money that he earned from selling his house to help her renovate her house, which she never actually put him, she never actually listed him on. So she left everything and her house included to Kathy, Kim, and Kyle. And in her will, there was a stipulation that Bob was allowed to live in the house for one year after she died. That was it. Only up to one year he could live there. And he could only live there if he was not to bring any female company or else he would be evicted. If he brought any women over to the house, he was immediately evicted. 
And Kim Richards had to go over there and check regularly to make sure there were no women there. Because if there were, Kim would have kicked him out. Um, Sass, I'm sure Kyle did end up with the ashes, but the will left the ashes to Bob. But think about it. If you were Bob, would you want her fucking ashes at the end of that? I'm sure Kyle wanted the ashes. I'm sure Kyle asked for the ashes and Bob wasn't going to say no. I'm sure Bob was salty, but he lived in the, in, he lived in that house, in her house for that final year, didn't bring any women over per the stipulation in the will. And then eventually he moved on. He married some crazy woman from a trailer park, divorced her, and then he passed away of pancreatic cancer only to then be cremated by the local discount cremation center in Palm Desert. What a way to go out. <laughs> like, what a way to go out. Poor Bob. Like, my heart breaks for poor Bob. He was such a good man, and he lost both of his wives. And at least it sounds like the first wife was a good wife. Kathy was a monster. I always thought it was weird that her ashes were on the bottom shelf. <laughs> Are they? I don't remember where they were. Oh, my God, no. I know, poor Bob, right? My heart breaks for him. Like, he was a good man. He stood by Big Kathy until the very end. Um, yeah. And then the section of the book ends with Big Kathy's friend, Jane Halloran. And Jane Halloran, who's interviewed throughout the book, who talks about Big Kathy and kind of also recollects what she remembers of Big Kathy. And she was her friend, and she didn't have very nice things to say about her in the end. But so the section ends... Uh, where she says that all Big Kathy ever wanted was to see her daughters become stars and marry rich men, which they all did. So she got to, you know, she got to live that out. Um, but she ends it with this. She says, even though all she wanted was to see her daughters become stars and marry rich men, her favorite granddaughter surpassed them all, referring to Paris Hilton. And then she says, whether Kathy, whether Kathleen, she refers to her as Kathleen, she says, whether Kathleen's in heaven or in hell, I bet she's thinking of Paris and saying, you go, girl. And that's how it ends. Did she slam someone's hand in a door? Uh, she slammed uh, Ken, who is Kathy, well, Kathy's stepfather, Kim and Kyle's dad, his wife that she stole Ken from. That wife, before she got pregnant and married Ken, she slammed his wife's ankle in a car door. We broke that down in last week's book club. So when Kathy married Hilton, Big Kathy must have been, oh yeah, Big Kathy loved it. I wonder if she planned it. I mean, who knows? Um, I always thought it was interesting that all three girls had babies at 19. Yeah, she told them, find a rich man and have babies and have lots of babies, lots and lots of babies. Maybe Bambi will knock the ashes over someday. Oh, no. They left her. I mean, it was still their mother. Yeah. What did you guys think? So the second section of the book, because the book's broken up into two parts. First part was all about Kathy Hilton and Big Kathy and all of that. The second section of the book, which I don't know if I would read. I don't know if you guys want me to read it, and maybe we'll continue to break it down here in book club. You can vote for that right now. Um, the second section of the book is dedicated to Rick Hilton and his family. So if we're interested in Rick Hilton and what Rick Hilton's family, obviously there's no direct connection to Housewives or Real Housewives of Beverly Hills or Kyle, Kim, and Kathy. Um, but if you're interested in the Rick Hilton part of the book, maybe we can read that and we'll continue to do that. I was only interested in the first part to get to know Big Kathy as it relates to Kathy Hilton and the sisters. Um, let me know if you're interested in the Rick Hilton section because that's another few chapters. I think that's another like two possible. Yeah, I think that's probably another two weeks worth of book club. So if you're, you care about that, let me know. Um, but yeah, that is the end of the first section of House of Hilton. It's interesting, right? Thanks, Sasha. Just give me a yes or a no in the live chat. Yes, keep reading or no, I'm good. Yes, keep reading or no, I'm good. Um, yes, please. Absolutely. Let's do it. Maybe we can move on to another book. Okay, so Val's the only person that wants to move on. I kind of personally wouldn't mind moving on. Um, yes, it's interesting. It's interesting, to be honest. It might be interesting. This should be a movie. No. Yes. 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 Okay, so it seems like we're getting more yeses than we are no's. 
I'm in for it. Yes. A couple of no's, but it seems like overwhelmingly everybody wants to keep going with the next section of the book, which I'm cool with. So then I'll see you back here next Tuesday, 5.30, 5.30 Pacific, 8.30 Eastern. We go live on Instagram at no filter with Zach or on YouTube, youtube.com slash just plain Zach. We'll continue to break down House of Hilton, but moving forward, we'll get into Rick Hilton's side of the family, which I think is actually going to be pretty interesting and juicy too. I would imagine that that's not going to be bad content considering it's a whole second section of the book. Did the Hiltons like Big Kathy? No, the Hiltons did not like Big Kathy. They thought she was a gold digger and they strongly disliked her. I think we broke all of that down in week one of, of House of Hilton Book Club. Um, yeah, they definitely did not like her. Good night, Tones. All right, guys. Shall we wrap for the night? Cheers. I hope you enjoyed some no filter wine available at nofilterwine.com. Housewives inspired. You're going to want to get these for Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. It says cut down my drinking or what? Or what? Or what? The second part was not as good as the first part. Oh, okay. So Lab Labitha read the second part. Maybe we skip a week. I read all of the second part and maybe we just dedicate one week to the second part. Because, I mean, I don't think the second part is going to be as juicy either, Labitha. And if you've already read it, I get it. Seems silly to only read half the book. I agree, JB. But, I mean, this is a, you know, the show is heavily focused on reality TV. It's heavily focused on housewives. So that's why we really focused on the first section of the book. Um, it's because that was in the realm. I wasn't sure if anybody was going to be interested in the Hilton family. Those Hiltons are something else. How is Big Kathy getting all these men? I mean, she had tricks. She would go to bars. She was apparently very aggressive. She would put her boobs out. She was, you know, wouldn't wear underwear. You know, she did her thing. She knew how to do it. She knew how to play the game. Yeah. Well, that's all I got for you guys. Um... But thank you. I appreciate you guys. Love you. Love you. Mean it. Um, any final thoughts before we wrap? You're awesome, Zach. Love your channel. Thank you. That's so sweet. What are the other options for the next book? Um, Golden Puss, clearly. Um, well, I have little boobs and wear underwear. <laughs> Um, next option for the next book. I don't know. We don't have, we haven't really discussed what the next book would be. Um, is there another book that you guys would like to read for Bravo book club? Let me know what you, nothing could top this. No effing way. I have to say of all of the books that we've broken down on Bravo book club, this was gold. There is another Hilton book. I don't know if we want to do an, a second Hilton book to me. That just might not sound very interesting to do another one. Do you think something happened to Kim as a child star? Oh, I wouldn't be surprised. But I mean, even if already having her mom pimp her out at such a young age, having to be a child star that provided for the family and never getting to have a real childhood, having to date multiple men. And I'm pretty sure these wealthy men that are born into these dynasties, these dynasties and these, you know, wealthy families, like that can't be easy either. And then her boyfriend that she ends up being like heavily into gets murdered while she's talking to him on the phone. She's an alcoholic, you know, daddy issues. Like poor Kim, I think, went through a lot. I don't even think something needed to happen to her necessarily. I think everything that's all right. I hope nothing else happened to her because the poor girl already had it rough. What happened to Kim's book? Nobody knows. It just got shot down. It got shot down, but she apparently got to keep her advance, which makes me think somebody squashed the book and paid the publisher to cover her advance. I would have loved Kim's book. I thought that would have been great. This is maybe why Kyle has such bad anxiety. That makes sense. Yeah, I think that absolutely makes sense. All right, guys, I think we're going to wrap for the night. I hope you have a wonderful night. I have an episode, a new episode of the podcast with Melissa Rivers that'll be dropping on Wednesday, tomorrow, actually, tomorrow, Wednesday, Melissa Rivers will be on the podcast. We had a really fun episode. She talks about Josh Flagg and his new relationship. She talks about Kelly Osborne getting pregnant. She talks about fashion police, Kathy Hilton. She talks about Chelsea Handler, obviously talks about a lot about her mother, Joan Rivers. Um, so that's a good episode. We'll be back live on Thursday night. So if you want to join on YouTube, be sure to hit that subscribe button 
smash that like button if you enjoyed tonight's book club um, and leave a comment with your thoughts or leave comments of what book you would like us to read in book club next. We go live for book club every Tuesday evening at 5.30 p.m. Pacific, 8.30 Eastern. Um, okay, later then. So interesting. Thank you, Zach. Thanks, Sasha. Bye, Kenny. Bye, Charmin. Bye, Carrie. I need to order some wine. Any suggestions? Nofilterwine.com. Get the variety pack, my love. You'll get both the rosé and the white wine. Delicious. Mwah. All right. Love you guys. Talk to you later. Ciao for now. Bye.